Malaria kills more than a million people every year. Although millions of dollars has been spent on research into the mosquito-borne illness, a cure is thought to be decades away. But recently, a group of Chinese scientists has begun reporting astonishing results. But their work is being all but ignored by Western scientists and by the World Health Organization. I'm Taymor Nabili, and on this edition of 101 East, we bring you the story of the Chinese scientists who, against world opinion, believe they're close to achieving a medical miracle. Mohali is an isolated island in the Comoros archipelago. It's also where Chinese scientists are employing a highly unconventional approach to finding a cure for malaria. They're using the islanders as human guinea pigs. Nick Lazaridis follows Professor Song Jiangping and his team on their hunt for a medical breakthrough. I'm about to join a group of Chinese scientists on a remarkable journey. You ready? Uh, ready? Mm -hmm. ready? <laughs> Hello. We're flying to the island of Moeli, the smallest and most isolated part of the Comoros archipelago, where I'll have the chance to witness a controversial medical experiment in action. The Chinese are attempting to eliminate malaria from Moeli with a highly unconventional approach experimenting on an island population of human guinea pigs. They've already produced some astonishing results against the deadly disease. Chinese scientists and healthcare workers have pursued the mission of eradicating malaria for over 1,000 years. From herbal medicine to chemical medicine, we have now found a good method. While most of the world's experts insist a global cure is at least 40 years away, the Chinese team, led by Professor Song Zhangping, are claiming that they can do it in a decade. If malaria is eradicated in 10 years, more than 10 million lives will be saved. At Moeli's tiny airstrip, the Chinese researchers are warmly welcomed and their strategy is being strictly enforced, much to the delight of Professor Sung. Everyone who enters this island by air or by sea must swallow a special tablet formulated by the Chinese team. There are no exceptions. It's a key part of the contentious technique they're using here, known as mandatory mass drug administration. And it's causing a serious division between East and West. Chinese scientists and Western scientists have a different way of thinking. We Chinese put emphasis on the results of practice. Western scientists focus on the process, or what they call scientific evidence. Process is important. But can process discover or lead to innovation? Practice, not process, leads to innovation. Truth comes from practice. It's a practice that appears to have paid off. Just months after starting the project in November 2007, Moeli's infection rate was slashed from 22% to less than 2% all by a simple four-tablet treatment. The main task of our anti-malaria team is to search for and eradicate the source. Here in their island laboratory, Professor Sung Zhangping is now leading dozens of his researchers in a final scientific assault on the remaining pockets of infection, hoping to declare the island malaria-free before the year is out. Our immediate focus is to search for those 140 islanders who are carrying the parasites. As you can see here, these researchers are doing a wide range of screening. Those islanders found to be positive will need to take medication. It 
It's a big day in the village of Wanani. The vice president of the Comoras is coming to celebrate the Chinese achievements. This mountain village was one of the worst areas for malaria on Moeli because of the mosquito-infested jungle that surrounds it, but not any longer. On the edge of Wanani, the professor is keen to show me the village hospital, which now stands empty. Before the project was carried out in November 2007, the hospital was crammed with malaria patients. Many were patients of malaria. Many children died of malaria in this hospital. Today, there is not a single malaria patient here. Professor Sung Zhang Ping says the dramatic success here is nothing short of a global breakthrough. And he's anxious to extend it to the world without delay. The Moeli project has been running for a year now and is problem-free. The experience clearly tells us that malaria can be eradicated globally in a short period. No need to wait with so many lives and resources wasted. The key point is to take an active approach. We achieved fast results and we were all deeply moved by the speed with which the disease decreased. Moeli's public health director, Fatanul Wafik, is astonished at the Chinese progress. He says malaria had long been established as the island's deadly scourge. Throughout its history, Moeli has experienced every form of malaria and families have remained poor for many years because it costs a lot of money to care for malaria sufferers. The island's malaria death toll has been at zero for more than a year. And Wafik's convinced that Moeli will soon become famous for its part in an extraordinary medical advance. I think we deserve observation. It is my hope that Moeli will become a shining example for the rest of the world. I'm not dreaming. This is the same ambition that made us declare war on malaria. So today, I can also claim the right to dream that Moeli will become an important reference point worldwide. The astonishing results achieved in the Comoros trace their origins here, to the University of Traditional Medicine in Guangzhou, and to this man, Professor Li Guaochao, one of China's leading authorities on malaria. His research began in an effort to help communist troops during the Vietnam War. The result was a drug based on a traditional herb identified 1,600 years ago by a Chinese doctor. His name was Ge Hong. In this book, he clearly sets out a prescription for artemisinin. It reads, squeeze an artemisinin plant and drink its juice. This can cure malaria. By studying this plant, the Chinese were able to identify what the world now knows as artemisinin, the most effective cure for malaria. On Moeli, Professor Lee's team are using a powerful combination of artemisinin with two other drugs. And while expanding their achievements from a tiny island to an entire continent like Africa might seem fanciful, Professor Sung Zhang Ping is convinced that with enough money and coordination, it will work, despite the sceptics. Okay. They said, OK, malaria could be eradicated on a small island, or that could even be done on a larger island. But the problem is that Africa is a huge continent. So I replied with a joke. If you're in a satellite, looking down at the Earth, Africa will become a small island. The same anti-malaria project can apply anywhere. 
The main thing is to have it done properly. It's the same logic. But the Chinese efforts to expand their bid to eliminate malaria has encountered a major hurdle and one that threatens to kill off the global rollout of the new artemisinin-based medication. And it's not logistics or money that's standing in their way, but the world's largest public health authority, the WHO. This strategy is not internationally recognised. And uh, why it is why WHO is not directly part of this. While the Chinese believe they're on the edge of an international breakthrough, the World Health Organization is not convinced. Its representative in the Comoras, Dr. Kassan Cogno, says their testing hasn't been thorough enough. It went through three steps. It didn't go through the four steps. And now as it is not, it didn't go through the fourth step, we are not, uh, WHO didn't recognize the, these drugs. Now, for some people, uh, looking at the situation, they would consider it quite strange that the WHO has no direct contact with the Chinese. What, why is that? Yes, because if the drug is not recognized and we go within the team and they didn't follow the WHO regulation on the drugs, and after some years there is a problem, they will say it is WHO job. This particular approach being used in the Comoros um, has never been written up and published in a peer-reviewed journal. So it hasn't seen the light of day through that important mechanism. Sir Richard Feacham is one of the world's leading figures in the struggle against malaria. Experts in this room will differ, but my hunches that we're talking about 2050, 2060, something like that, that's about the time that we can hope to see a malaria-free planet. Last month, he kicked off the Asia-Pacific Malaria Initiative in Brisbane, addressing some of the region's top experts. But Professor Li and his team from Guangzhou weren't invited. While the Chinese claims might excite the public imagination, Western scientists remain unimpressed. Interesting. Um, anecdotes are interesting. They, they incite the curiosity. You know, this sounds rather good. Tell me more. Is the, is the reaction, I think, to these reports. But it falls short, it falls way short, of, of a peer-reviewed scientific journal publication. And that's really what we need now.